Welcome to the Auto Success Executive Spotlight. I'm your host, Brian Ankney. Today, my guest is Joe Levine from PMD. Welcome, Joe. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, I'm glad you made it in. Uh, you said a flight was easy? Flight's always easy. Well, until it's not. Until it's not. But, but it's fine. Weather was great. Nice and smooth. Got here on time. What everybody wants. Yep. Sure. Thank you for coming. I've got a few questions for you, if that's all right. That'd be great. Cool. Well, let's get started. Tell me a little bit about yourself, um, You know your experience in the car business, the career path that led you to where you are today. Well, I'm a bald guy, as you can tell. Mm -hmm. um, grew up in the car business. My father was a dealer principal for 53 years. So I actually started with him when I was in middle school and, and uh, when I, I played ball at the University of Miami, lacrosse. And when I graduated, I left his employee, which made great points in my family. My family was so excited when I did that, and I struck out on my own. And I started selling cars at a Porsche Audi dealership. I uh, made my own way. And uh, after, after doing that for a while, I got involved in some sales training and launched my own sales training company, stayed in retail, ended up continuing to go through everything from fixed to variable ops, did it all and eventually bought my own Chevrolet dealership, had that for a number of years, sold that. And we converted the training company at the time, because I kept the, the training company when we sold the dealership off, and uh, converted the training company into an advertising agency. And here we are. PMD is uh, an ad agency in multiple states and growing every time I turn around. It's fantastic. That's awesome. You know, since since we are in Ohio right now, you clarify you, you're you are not a uh, a Miami of Ohio graduate. You are a Miami, Florida graduate, right? Just remember the letter, because this letter. is what it's all about. For those of you watching, we know what it's all about. <laughs> Wonderful. It's all about the U. So, you know, you have a lot of video experience. Um, can you? I mean, a, a lot, a lot of video experience. Can you share a, a fun story? I mean, because video is a ton of fun. It is. I, you know, because we're we don't farm anything out, freelance anything out. We have our own production studio and, and facilities. Everything is done on property. We've done a lot of different things. And let's see, one of the funnier ones, which mm -hmm. really could be viewed as not so funny, but at the same time, whether or not is video effective, is television effective. For a number of years, uh, we had a, have a Ford dealer who wanted his grandchildren involved. And that's always a sticky one, right? Are they going to get it done? Does it make sense? And it worked. Uh, two young boys that started out were, were probably five years old. Mm -hmm. And a year, maybe a year plus into that branding relationship, and it was really great, and the community got behind it. And they were two really dynamic kids on set. We decided to do an event one Christmas. And uh, we wanted them to promote it, where we were going to bring in Santa and Mrs. Claus, and we found a great husband and wife that really looked the part, right? Mm -hmm. So I tell you that story to tell you this one. Come to the dealership, get your free picture with Santa and Mrs. Santa, and get uh, a gift card from a local big box retailer. Great. So the way that we did the interplay with the two boys and the... The grandfather, the dealer principal, approved it. He thought it was really cute. So the way we did this was, did you hear? No, what? You didn't know? No, what? Santa's coming. Where? To the dealership. And we had the other young man do this and say, holy shot. And we beeped the appropriate place so it sounded, well, it was beeped in the right place. Yeah. And the grandfather saw this and he went crazy. This is going to be great. This is going to be great. This is going to be great. Proof that people pay attention. I said, remember, you can't pull this. We're going to stay with this project. We're going to see it through the end. It hits. The next day, he calls me on the phone and he says, don't get mad. I said, I'm not pulling it. He says, you have to pull it. I'm getting hate emails. I'm getting phone calls. How could you do this to your grandchildren? I said, oh, Mr. Nolan watches television anymore. So <laughs> so, so it was. it was just one of those fun yet alarming things that you still have to be careful at the same time it was proof that people do pay attention to the message and the frequency of the message mm -hmm. so we got a lot of those but that one off the top of my head really seems to resonate 
on a regular basis. That's that's funny. It's it's like the Home Alone. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, it was. So it, it probably really got people's attention. You it know. It did. It did. Yeah. It did. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Well, hey, I'd like to, I'd like to kind of shift gears a little bit and here talk about people. Um, you know, people are the backbone of any business. I mean, I know they are here at Babcock. So it seems like every business wants more great people. You call your people marketing superheroes. How do you find marketing superheroes? They're superheroes for any business. How do you, how do you uh, attract them ret- and retain them? It's a great question because we're still very involved in in that side of the automobile business. People ask me if I miss retail. I'm involved in stores on a regular basis with uh, my entire team back in the office, right? So mm-hmm. um, we find it to be challenging. And I think the biggest thing for me at my age was was figuring out how to be contemporary, effective, not be old school. Because the way we did things 20 and 30, and even 40 years ago was a lot different than, than now. And understanding the workforce and understanding what motivates people and understanding that money is not always the number one thing on people's minds, right? Mm. It's time off, it's perks, it's all the things that, especially in retail, you, you really uh, don't necessarily have the ability to talk about. In our business, it's not much different because, well, you could just imagine how many moving parts. Because everything that we do um, in both our digital company and our ad agency is very hands on. As I said, we don't freelance anything out. So we're always looking for people that want to be involved, right? Uh, so we have marketed to potential candidates to come into our business mm-hmm. much in the same way that we help dealer clients market for their people, whether it's fixed or variable ops, administrative, whatever. And, and through focus grouping employees and really listening to interview responses and, and managing those conversations yeah. and evolving. And, and what we've learned is that um, we have to figure out how to rig our schedules and give people the time off they're looking for and a balanced quality of life. And I don't have to get into that conversation because there's been tons of articles and videos and, right, everybody's singing from the same song sheet. And, and it's very difficult because turnover is always prevalent. I mean, we're still fighting that in, at the retail level in the car business. Yeah. We've been very blessed in, in our agency to not have the high turnover. We still have people that move on and, and that happens. Either they can get more money and we just can't get to their number that they want from a budget perspective, or it's just time for them to springboard to the next piece of altitude and we don't have a spot for them, right? Mm-hmm. But um, it's really listening to the workforce and understanding how we can not just hire, but retain people. Because bringing someone in for 30 days and having them uh, sit down and say, this isn't really what I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. is a hard thing for us because like any company, we're always training and downloading information and then to have to start over again makes for a very bumpy relationship. It's a very expensive relationship. It's hugely expensive, whether it's our business, your business, the car industry at the retail level, it doesn't matter. Everybody's finding that the most expensive component is the hiring process and the retention process. So making good decisions and, uh, and, we, and we're very deliberate. Our, our little company, we have a, a five-prong approach to this, including psychological testing and, and a lot of analysis that goes in, and, and including an entire, we shut the office down and go into the conference room, and I step out after doing the introduction, and everybody gets to interview the candidate, and the candidate gets to interview everyone. So nobody can ever walk into my office and go, well, you didn't tell me about Bob. Bob's a holy shot guy. Why did, <laughs> right? Yeah. So yeah. so we don't we, we really want to make sure that eyes are wide open. And that's it's very deliberate and it's very time consuming. It helps us. Wow. You know that I mean that's that 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 is such a competitive market now for people. You know, it's like and it's, companies are so creative in it. You know, I mean like I my both my little brother and my best friend work at companies that have unlimited PTO. Like my mind can't even get around that. Like I said, you know, do people go like he had my best friend was telling me this weekend that at his company, one of their engineers, she's been with him six months and she's taken a week off every month since she got hired. And I thought, how in the world, how in the world can companies exist like that? But I guess it's the idea of, of people are now able to find the company where they fit and companies are going to offer what what fits within their business model. Yeah, that's, that's a fair point. I mean, I, you know, for our company, because that work fun balance, that life balance is so important to people, right? What mm-hmm. we've What we've had to do is create a completely different structure than we had when we first opened. When we first opened, 
I, you know, I'm still a car guy, but back then I had just sold my dealership and we were doing things and I got tired of traveling 125,000 domestic a year every week. I'm in a different store. That was part of the, the, the thought process. So we opened up this ad agency now and we were like a car dealership. You get a week after a year, you get two weeks after two years, you get three weeks after five or seven or however many years it was, yeah. and you get you know sick days are included, and that's what you get. And now when you come to work at PMD, and this is not a paid political announcement, it's just the, the way we do things. Mm -hmm. Your first year you get twenty eight PTOs. Oh my gosh. That's a bunch. And you get your birthday off. Well actually it's that's included. So you get fifteen PTOs, you get uh, some holidays in there, you get three summer Fridays, you get your birthday off. After three years, you start to accrue one additional PTO day a year. It sounds like a lot, and it is. And the burden on the P&L is vivid and pr ever-present because you have to figure out how to supplement the schedule to be able to get the things done that we need to work on. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's probably a lot less expensive than hiring another person every 30 days, right? It totally is. And, and we're a very loyalty-based program. Uh, when we when we look at human resources, we consider our team to be not just a team but a family, and um, our people are always are always included in conversations. There's no private meetings. It's it's very above board and very transparent. And if you ask any of our team members who they make decisions for, they'll tell you on the record, unsolicited, we make decisions that are best for the company. So, so culture to us really matters. Hmm. And we've actually been able to help dealerships with this because of their annual turnover on a national basis. And it's, it's hard. It's gut-wrenching. It's a difficult, it's a P&L struggle because of the expense. Mm -hmm. It's a lot better than hiring and training every 30 days. Yep. Well, let's, let's, let's move from inside your shop to inside your customer's shop. And I guess, and, and more directly, what you're doing to help them. I mean, you, you, have, you have a view inside of, hundreds of dealerships and what they're doing marketing wise that you're, that you're helping them with. Right. What trends are you seeing? Like what, what's working, what's not working and, and where do you see us? Where, where are we going? It's a really great question. And uh, hopefully we have another three hours to talk about that one. <laughs> the landscape has, has changed. And you know, I, I, I graduated college in 1982, mm -hmm. right? So other than the fact that that makes me old, um, it also suggests that I've seen a lot in my career, right? Interest rates and gas shortages and, and strikes and lockouts and all kinds of unicorns and pony rides and cotton candy that you could possibly imagine. And then what we've gone through in the last couple of years with a pandemic and microchips and all the things that we've seen and, and all, how- All those unprecedented things that right. you've seen one or two or three times, right? Which is now precedented, right? Yeah. Because we keep pointing back at it and we keep looking at the solution and what are we going to do and 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 really the 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 conundrum here is is figuring out how to stay in balance and keep working and um, and managing the some say new world order well fortunately or unfortunately what's old is new again right we went from having globs and globs of inventory and a very low carrying cost from a floor plan perspective in terms of interest rate to now much different interest rates. It's, in, it's inverted itself. Inventory has been very wobbly and wobbly, and now we're starting to see that change, and inventory is coming back. And instead of having the blue one that no one wanted, but there were four people that just needed a vehicle, today it's changing, and the race to the bottom is coming back, right? Where everybody is now seeing that transactional advertising, not just image, we're open, is 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 becoming more front and center and will be in the next well in the next 90 days to 12 months depending on who you represent from a franchise or franchise's perspective right so so the conversation keeps changing and the biggest thing that that we want to always focus on is the planning stage we want to get out in front of it and not wait till um i went through five agencies the first year i was a dealer they all called me on a Wednesday and said, what do you want to do this weekend? Oh, I, I don't sell cars? Hocked <laughs> my house to buy the store. How about you help me? Right. So we're seeing more and more people surfacing that are getting frustrated because they're asking that question and their concern at the retail level is retailing, right? So we want to get into the planning in the early phases of 
the what if stuff and not just have a singular tunnel visioned approach to this because one size does not fit all. What looks like everything is coming back online is changing again. Um, the tug of war that exists in the media world between traditional and digital and which one do you do? How do we tie it back to a PL and um, on a per car basis? All of this has really demanded more data, more metrics, more conversation, um, which I think is, is long overdue. Mm-hmm. And I'm happy about that. Um, and, and we're finding that the planning stage is really where, it, where it's come. It's so important. We actually removed all the algebra because we realized that, well, wouldn't it be cool instead of saying we want to spend X to the value per car and that's my budget. And then it's like going to a carnival and putting a blindfold on and you put a dollar down and they give you three darts and just whip them at the wall. And if it breaks a balloon, you win whatever you... That's not how we can do business. Never really was. But now it's even more important that we understand and have a set of goals, right? So we we and we give this tool for free. And anybody that wants it even on your show, just contact me afterwards and we'll send it to you. And you just plug in what your uh, guest count was over a specific period of time, what your closing ratio was. There's three different metrics that you plug in and the math takes care of itself. You don't need to know algebra. It does it by itself. And it's going to tell you to deliver this many vehicles, you need to bring in this many people. Okay. Well, if I need to deliver this many vehicles, the old school metric of a multiplier of X dollars a car doesn't apply anymore because now I have a balance between traditional and digital. How do I get this many people through the door to deliver this many vehicles? So we keep peeling this back to look at the core metrics that will help people rather than, look, anybody can do an award-winning TV spot, right? Radio spot, right? Um, Print, digital, whatever it is. That's great. But we know that consumers react to things that make the most sense. They really do. But we want to get involved in information stream, planning, uh, good, solid, creative thoughts before we even get close to a given month. Because in the car business, right, it's not one P&L, for the fiscal year. Our fiscal period is 30 days, sometimes 28 days long, 31 days long. And so we have 12 fiscal periods over the course of a single calendar year. You can't wait until the first or second week or first day or the day before the month. You got to have a better plan than that, especially now. Mm-hmm. So, so you mentioned that that you're getting involved in the pre-planning. You're not calling them on Wednesday saying, what do you want to do this weekend? You're getting involved in pre-planning. Can you kind of give us an example of that? I mean, is it is it have to do with what cars are coming in? Do you talk about what cars to order or, or you know, tell us about that? Great question. As a car person, right, it, it's very important to understand that we're just not here to throw a bunch of media consumers and expect them to react. So we're interested in long before we get to creative or messaging or do we do all transactional ads or do we do branding ads at the dealership tier three level or do we mix them and do, we want to look at firewalling, what we call it hometown. We'll take an area of responsibility, whether it's called an AOR or whatever manufacturer acronym they they have, it changes by manufacturer, right? And we'll look at what, what the zip codes are for that store. And we'll also look at where the trading area is. We'll create heat maps. We'll take the prior six and 12 months worth of deliveries for new and the same thing for used. We'll put them on a map and we'll color code it. It almost looks like a, a weather radar with green and red and all these different interesting colors so that we can understand where the pockets of business are coming from. Because it doesn't always come from a specific set of zip codes, right? There could be geographic boundaries that are preventing people. Why can't we sell into that that area? And then we'll find out why. We want to understand what manufact what I'm sorry, what retailers are invading that firewalled area, so that we can understand what they're saying and why. And while there are restrictive covenants by some manufacturers that you can't advertise in, in another retailer's backyard, right? There's still a a very prevalent downward force with folks that want to go into your market and pump in a bunch of registrations, taking market share away from you. Mm -hmm. And whilst the term sales effectiveness has a different ramification, especially legally than it did a number of years ago, it's still important to understand uh, travel patterns, where people are coming from, where's the low-hanging fruit from a geography, what the pump in, pump out reports are, uh, all of that data digital eyes, all of those things so that when we create 
messaging, the plan, the budgets for the digital space, for the traditional space, and anything in between, right? Um, even from a, a, a corporate philanthropy perspective, because corporate philanthropy needs to be identified. We, it goes way beyond golf outings. Anytime you put your store's name out there in the public eye, it has to be tied to the brand and it can't be splintered because that gets expensive. Yeah. So by the time we get to budget, it's a very concise, logical approach to being able to justify why we're the spending the money, where we're spending it, what the expectation is, what we what the, the generation quotient should be. So it really starts way before the what are we going to do this month? Yeah. That makes sense. It does. Um, we believe that we that investing in that type of data and that type of understanding, uh, we have clients that give us access to inventory so that their folks can educate our creative staff on new models, on models that they've had for a while, so that we really can get into, we had a, a retailer that was so involved a few years ago in the new interiors of Volvos. Mm-hmm. And and uh, we we realized how incredible it was, including the key fob and the stitching on the key the key fob rather right, and and why that mattered and how they could get somebody's attention. You could go and buy any car from anybody, or truck or SUV. What makes one better than the other? Is it ten dollars a month in payment? Is it a thousand dollar rebate? Is it consumer loyalty from a review perspective? Is it all of the above? Let's understand what we've got to work with and then execute from there. Wonderful. Well, I want to ask one more marketing question. Sure. Um, you know, I mean, especially from 1982 to now, you mentioned. Um, and I mean, just in the last 15 years, I mean, in the last three years, like marketing changes so quickly now. I mean, it's if somebody would have told you in 1982 that we would have the things we have today, you would have said they don't even have that stuff on Star Trek, you know? So it's true. They didn't. They didn't. It's true. It's they totally didn't. true. And so, like, what, like, just one, one kind of just, crazy idea that you think we'll have in five or 10 years marketing wise, some fun. I, one step back and two steps forward. Great question. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I, I was having a conversation with a client and we were talking about that in, in, in digital space because our company is broken up into pieces. You can do business with just our ad agency or just our digital company or both. So we're not demanding that you have the whole enchilada. And that's where the conversation went to. And I said, well, I remember going to NADA in Atlanta, Georgia in 1997. And if I'm off by a year, I apologize. We'll blame it on concussions from playing college sports, right? <laughs> so so uh, I remember meeting after meeting, after seminar, after seminar, I'm sitting there with my pad and everybody's talking about, oh, we don't need showrooms anymore. We don't need salespeople anymore. Everybody's going to buy online. Well, in today's world, if that was true, how is it possible for anybody in retail, and there are people out there that insist that we only have to pay attention to the digital space. Forget pandemics, forget forget chip, it, chip madness, whatever the B-rated movie is that's coming out about microchips, right? <laughs> forget all of that stuff, right? The reality is, do people really buy vehicles the same way they buy on Amazon? The average shopping cart total on Amazon is $47. The average price of a new vehicle today, as you and I are sitting here talking, is over 48 grand. So are we just expecting people to bypass the taste it, touch it, smell it, have a product knowledge person that knows? I mean, when I've sold vehicles, I wanted to know how many pounds of paint were on there. I used to torture the engineers uh, that, that uh, were involved in, in the franchises that I represented because I wanted to know. You would want to know that, yep. right? So it, it's very important that consumers get the information from a credible source and are able to spool that together. And that may not be a complete answer. We could, that's another one we could go on for an hour and a half on. But it, it's, it's really important to recognize that consumers today react differently um, because of cost and rates and payments and terms. You know, when, when, when people are walking out with 72 and 84 month paper on a finance basis, I'd say the world has changed. Yep, they're married to that car for a while. Married plus. And yep. it's, divorce rate is not exactly helpful in the car business, right? You can't get out in 16 months. 
No. Well, I mean, I, I think about it sometimes when, when I have similar conversations. I've gotten, I've gotten into my rental car before and thought, oh, no, I got to drive this for three days. This is so uncomfortable. Can you imagine taking an, you know, an 80, 84 month loan on a vehicle you've never sat in? I mean, if you've never sat in it, I mean, that's, that's, that's something I wouldn't be ready to do. Then there are people that, that do that. And there are retailers that cater to that. And, and, and I, I think that's great. I'm not saying don't ever do that. I'm saying that where's the middle ground? I think that we live in a very advanced climate from a society perspective. It doesn't matter where in the country we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Consumers, though, are, are still, this is a major purchase, right? It's, it's, not, it's not go out and buy a, a stick of gum, right? It's an expensive endeavor. They're investing into this. And um, if they're going to invest it into that long-term relationship, not just with the vehicle, but with the retailer as well, because service retention, right? Let's, let's not forget, fixed ops really matters from a service retention. The better our service absorption, the more profitable the store and all of the trimmings that go with that. We can't just worry about hoping because hope is not a plan. Yeah. Hoping is not going to get everybody over the curb, as the old expression goes. And I have to, world of EVs, we were laughing about that earlier today, right? Yeah. We can't talk about burning gas and all this other stuff, but over the curb still matters. We have to be really cognizant of how we get consumers to respond to the messages that, that we put out there. And focus grouping matters. We do a lot of that as well. Nice. Well, I, I, want, I want to talk about video a little bit. I mean, video is sure. definitely king. I mean, we're sitting in the Babcock's media video studio part of it right now. Right. And, uh, you know, let's talk about video. Like, where should dealerships be employing video? I mean, is it, I mean, is it online? Is it on television? Is it everywhere? And, and how, how does a dealership decide how they can best use video and where they should be using it? And when does it become overkill? Yeah. When does it become information overload and, and people just move to another retailer because when you're sitting on your mobile device or you're sitting in your office or you're sitting at home and you're on a on a whatever you can just bounce and go wherever you want to go so there's a blending uh, of when it becomes too much in our opinion and we've proven it in metrics both in the digital space and what we see in the traditional environment from walk-in traffic and as i said before focus grouping as well there's a combination of things so some of it's informational some of it is dealership branding. Some of it is transactional. Um, we had a Nissan dealer not too long ago, and we did something very simple. We decided uh, that we weren't happy with the metrics that we were seeing in their GA, their Google Analytics. Mm -hmm. We didn't like the bounce rate. We didn't like the time on site. They were a relatively new client, pages viewed and VDPs and all of it. So we got a hold of the, the, the BDC manager and said, we need a favor. Do you have anybody in your organization that does great walkarounds? And there's always that one or two people that do a fantastic job of walkarounds, right? Great. I want this to be very Blair Witch. Take out your phone, hold it here, hit play or record rather, and just wherever that salesperson takes you around the vehicle, just keep rolling. Dropbox the footage to us. We're going to polish it up. We're going to put the contact information and we're going to create landing pages for each new vehicle model. And we're going to put install that on, on the website. So this is a real world example of, is this too much? Well, it wasn't. Metrics were incredibly different. Time on site, number of page views, VDPs, because people, people were walking into the dealership and say, I know that Bob was talking about the cubic feet in the back of this rogue and the package thing and the whatever it was. Could you show that to me again? That's when we knew that we had something that was being effective, mm -hmm. right? So, so that type of activity really matters. And it, and it came from just a, a what if. We were spitballing one day and said, how could we do a better job rather than just because right? everybody knows about YouTube metrics and put more video and organic response. Is it just that? How about when you send a thank you for booking a service appointment? Wouldn't it be great if you got an email from, from my Chevy store that said, Brian, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow at two o'clock for your, for your oil change. I'll mm -hmm. uh, just click on this uh, video link 
and you're going to see exactly what to do. And we put a GoPro on a dashboard. Simple GoPro. It doesn't always have to be this big, fancy production. Clean it up, make it beautiful, and now you get bird's eye view. And you, and you come off the interstate, and you make a right here, and here's where you pull in, especially if it's a new facility. Well, that's a great idea. Right? And here, pull into the service drive. And look, there's Tom. Brian, we're all set for you. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. So oh, that's, that's neat. <laughs> so Right? So those types of things, it, it, is that considered selling? Well, you, you sell yourself, you sell your product, you sell your company. Those are very old school philosophies. When did that become useless? So it's not just having wonderful, you know, glitzy TV spots or, or hyped up Instagram stuff and, 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 and even TikToks and other things. That's great and it's very useful. Where are people going to react? Let's peel that back and let's give people, because people are constantly being barraged with video. Let's give them something that they can understand that they can react to. The service drive one has resonated well uh, as an example. You know, that's, that's neat. I mean, I, I could see, you know, if I, was, if I was selling cars again, I could see myself just putting a GoPro on a helmet and doing a video that says, you know, when, when you come in on, on Saturday morning, you know, I park your car right here and you see the car park in, you see, you know, the, you get the view of getting right. out of the car, right. walk in the door, take a right. My desk right. is the third one, you know, sure. Right up there by the window. Sure. I mean, how cool is that? But not just, in, not just in English. We, we've done this in multiple languages. When we've used a translator in, in the website, so if uh, you have some, a member of the Latin community mm -hmm. that wants to look at everything in Spanish, we then have the ability to move the site into all Spanish, including the walk-around videos. You want to talk about, but then you have to be smart. If you're going to cater to, I brought the Latin community, if you're going to cater to the Latin community as well, you better have the right phone numbers. It can't go to the main switchboard. It's got to, you have to think this all the way through. When you're able to speak with people the way they want to be spoken with in a short, efficient way because nobody wants to spend, everybody says they don't have a lot of time. I don't have a lot of time today. How much is my trade worth? Can you get me to 300 a month? That hasn't changed, yeah. right? We have to desk deals and be efficient. At the same time, we have to be informational to be able to make you feel comfortable enough to take the vehicle especially from us, right? Mm -hmm. So all of this plays, and video is very important in all facets of the retail automobile business, in our opinion, and it's worked. We have case studies that prove it. Wow, that, that, I, that, that, those are some great ideas. Um, Joe, thank you for coming today. Is there anything more you'd like to share with our audience before we say goodbye? Two things, first of all, I, I, I really think that, that those of you that are watching this, pay attention to Babcock's Media. I mean, I, I can't stress to you the, the time that we spent, the 45 minutes that we toured your facility, both fixed and variable ops are being tackled by both your print and your, your video products. I can't speak highly enough um, on how valuable and important that is, that somebody could be sitting on their mobile device or at their desk and, and, and watching us, right? That's what you want, right? Yep. So... So that's important. You're a resource and people need to take advantage of that resource and, and help their business at whatever level they need the help. The second thing is, don't be afraid to ask questions of your experts. Some are more expert than others. I get it. Um, I probably shouldn't have done air quotes, whatever. Um, it's important to understand how to tie back to the P&L, how to be responsible as the pressure in continues to mount, right? Mm -hmm. in, in closing... Pre-pandemic, pick a year, 2018, 2017, 2019, transactional pricing was lower. Interest rates were half. Now, if it's retail, an A tier is more than double. Not a lot of money on the hood of vehicles. That'll change as day supply changes. But the reality is consumers react to that. Interest-free credit days and all the other fun perks that we were pocketing because we had no inventory and selling to the blacktop. We have a client. And a personal friend of mine, it's funny how clients, not funny, it's, 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 it's really wonderful how clients end up becoming personal friends. A personal friend who's a, a multiple platform uh, VP, always sold to the blacktop, 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 blacktop. So if he had, you know, 50, he would sell 50. 60, he would sell 60. Now he's got 140 on the ground and the managers are saying, well, I think we can get to 100. Wait, what? 
<laughs> so the frustration of that and the carrying cost of that and all of the other things that have really inverted and become lopsided, do the research, ask the questions, peel it back. Don't turn it into an onion. Be excited. And last but certainly not least, training. Think about this. The average turnover in a dealership is still high. And if you think about the number of people that are selling vehicles in the retail automobile business right now, probably were new into the business in the last 24 months. So if you look at today's date, whatever, April, whatever the date is, 25th or whatever, right? Yeah. And we look at the last 24 months, if somebody came into the business in the last 24 months, are they ready for a sea of vehicles? Are they ready to explain to somebody how a lease works? Are they going to be able to overcome the 72-month payment? What did you just say to me? Are they going to be able to handle the phone skills? A very close friend of mine by the name of Tom Stuker. I'm sure you, you've heard of Tom. Maybe I went you know. to his school. Okay. I saw him at, a, at an airport. Uh, we were in Tampa waiting. We got weathered in a ground stop, and we sat at the bar and uh, drinking soda. <laughs> and, uh, and, and he was commenting, it's, it's interesting how his phone is ringing like crazy because everybody's realizing that it's no longer just five people on the same blue car, four people on the same blue car. You have to know how to be in, in, intuitive on the phone, intuitive with your, uh, with your CRM responses uh, via email, intuitive on how to, how to manage a deal, how to TO a deal. So training, 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 even the most basic level. We had uh, a client recently that asked me, you know, we're advocates for a 10-step selling approach. Everybody has different paths to the road of the sale, right? Um, and I brought up uh, the step guest ride. Why don't you call it a demo? Because I don't want to punch people in the face. I'm not a dentist. I'm not going to put teeth back in your mouth. It's, those days are gone. They're honored guests. We need to treat them as such, right? So mm -hmm. train them. Make sure that everybody understands what your initiatives are before you even ask. So that when you get the phone up, right? I can still say phone ups. When you get the walk-in person, when you get the, the, the digital hit, whatever the, whatever the hand raise is and where it's coming from, you have to be able to speak with people in a way that is informational and motivational to get them to want to come in and take delivery. Mm -hmm. So it's not just putting crazy offers and, and, and look at this number, blam, blam. It's, it's a lot deeper than that. And, and train them, train yourself, train the entire four corners of your business to be able to give both your internal customers, right, your, your, your team members, like we talked about before, a reason for being and an excited reason for staying yeah, yeah. and your external customers, the people that you're already doing business with, especially if you're, well, it doesn't matter if you're a low volume or a high volume, your UIO units in operation, you want to maintain that and, and be able to continue thriving because that's what retailers do. We've lived through a lot. Let's stay that way. Thank you for taking the time to join us for this Auto Success Executive Spotlight. I'm your host, Brian Ankney, joined today by my guest, Joe Levine from PMD, we hope to see you again soon.